Hello, and welcome to another devlog for Toaster Defense, a platformer tower defense game where you must protect the toaster at all cost. I'm Woots, and on this devlog, I'll be taking you through some gameplay changes that I've made based on feedback that I've received from my playtesters. At the end of November, I sent out a playtesting build to a handful of friends to get some feedback on Toaster Defense. Oh, there. That's my wife! If you're interested in watching how I approached the first phase of playtesting for my game and greater insight into the responses, then you can watch the video that I will upload with this. But please, make sure to come back to this video as I will be showing the solutions that I'm working on based on that feedback. If you don't want to watch that video and you just want updates on Toaster Defense, no problem. Here's the too long didn't watch version, as well as other things I'll be toasting today. Gameplay redundancy, improving reload and movement mechanics, and improvement to the lighting. I'll start off with the smallest, yet most visually improved, the lighting. This is something that I've been struggling with for a while, and when I say a while, I mean since the beginning of the freaking game. I kept trying over and over and over again to create proper lighting for the game, but alas, I couldn't seem to make it something that I actually liked. One of my playtesters specifically made a comment about it, as well as some of you, such as Nemoid Dev, giving me some good tips in the comments. After some more research, I found this video on how to create a cool visual style using the lighting settings. I followed the tutorial, adjusted my settings, played with the post-processing, and in the end, Toaster Defense now looks much, much more visually appealing, and I'm incredibly happy with it. I'll drop a link to the video below if you guys want to use it for your games as well. What do you guys think about the new look? I would love to hear what you think about it in the comments or over on my Discord. Next up, let's talk about the play testers' feedback on the gameplay. Out of the nine testers, almost all of them mentioned something about how the game would get stale once all the turrets were built. Many of which also said that they would camp at the bottom of the level and pick off the little dudes that would attack our kawaii uwu toaster. I, too, also did this a lot during playtesting, but I thought it was because I'd become so good at the game after working on it for so many hours, but it turns out it's just a gameplay flaw and it needs a lot of fixing. So that's where this new enemy comes into play. This roly-poly robot is a huge threat to your defenses. Not only will it attack the toaster, but it will also destroy any turrets along the way clearing the way for all the robots to sneak through. It's slower and harder to destroy than the smaller enemies, and when a lot of them group up together, you better focus on shooting all of them down as fast as possible. Or, you're gonna have to completely rebuild everything. They are freaking bulldozers, man! I believe that this helps in keeping constant movement for the player, because not only must they now protect the toaster, but they also have to manage keeping all of their turrets alive, or they're going to have to rebuild everything. I'm also working on another enemy type, as well as concepts to redesign the buzzsaw enemy from the last devlog, so please make sure you subscribe to see updates when they are added in. Last few things I want to focus on for this devlog are some minor, yet significant changes. Firstly, I added a reload meter, as well as an icon to show the player when they are reloading and cannot shoot toast. This is something that I knew I needed to have in the game, and literally all the playtesters said something about it one way or another. Secondly, playtesters commented on the unreliability of the dash. While it can still have issues, I have tightened it up a bit. Now, the player can only target an enemy if they've jumped, and if the enemy is lower than the toaster oven. That means that it won't detect enemies above the player, which caused problems when there were enemies on a platform above the player. You can also dash through enemies now. Some playtesters asked for this ability, so I added it into the game. I'm sure I'll continue tweaking the dash ability in the future, but it has been improved significantly. Lastly, I ran into a problem where if there were too many enemies in the same spot, 
the game's frame rate would drop very low. Like, really low. After some stress test, it looked like the game could handle about 25 enemies on the same spot. This is a huge problem. Since I had the game set up where the enemies would reach the toaster and they would continuously attack it. Meaning, when a large group of enemies would reach the bottom, well, you get the idea. To fix this, I changed it so that when the enemies reach the toaster, they will explode on impact. Although, I'm a little bummed the robots won't be attacking because I like their animations. This is common in tower defense games and it will work here too. That's it for today's devlog. Thank you everyone for watching. I would absolutely love to hear what you think about the game so far. Please leave me your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to support the channel and subscribe because it really, really freaking helps. I'll see you guys next time.